we're still working away on the tractor. I've been trying to heat this axle up to, to get it to pull in. You can see I got a barbecue. I filled it up with briquettes and let it cook for a whole afternoon. And it's still frosted and frozen in place. We got two holes showing on this side and only one on this side. And I was hoping to move this one in and get it even with the other. But it just might end up staying where it is. And uh, so working on the Got the whole compartment under the hood all taken out. The governor's out of it. The uh, we've got a few parts here. Here's a water pipe. Uh, actually, this isn't a water pipe. This is the air intake pipe that goes uh, between the air filter and the carburetor. And then over here we have the air intake itself. And they continuously welded these in place. And the, I'll show you the one down cellar that came off it was broken. So I had to chisel off the old one and then weld the new one in place. And I'd never welded uh, sheet metal to a casting before. So that was kind of an interesting process, but it looks like it all worked. And uh, we'll get a coat of paint on it. It'll work uh, better than the original. So that's where we are out here. And we'll take a walk inside, get a little shot in the basement. Thought we'd get one more shot before we go down cellar. This is the cooling fan assembly standing on end here. It's a big casting where it fits up to the uh, governor. This all has to be sandblasted and cleaned and painted. The older bees had a uh, rubber bushing that failed and the, the fan would then walk forward and chew up the radiator. Uh, this being the later one, it has a spring uh, friction clutch on the uh, fan so that uh, we don't have to worry about that coming off at some point. This is the governor assembly, controls the throttle, and uh, if you turn it around, this is the end that drives the alternator. This is the drive coupling for the alternator. The bearings in it are amazingly uh, smooth and there's no play in anything. Let me flip it over so we can see inside here. Here we have the set of flyweights that uh, control the throttle arm for the governor. The gears are all in nice shape. No real rust. This is the original uh, Gliptol paint that the factory put on the inside the casting. The crankcase looks just as nice. There's no rust anywhere. Looks like it's been getting plenty of oil. No real issues, so I'm not going to tackle that. We're just going to clean it up, paint it, and put it back in place. All right, down in the basement, I've got the uh, the new air cleaner intake, and here's the old one sitting next to it. And you can see it broke off, and somebody made a collar and spliced the bottom and the top half together. And up at the top here, you can see there was damage to it. I don't know what kind of abuse it took, but it took a pretty good beating. So really had very little choice but get a new one and weld it to the base. So uh, it's going to look a whole lot nicer. Well, it's Saturday, May 2nd, and uh, a few more parts getting painted to get the lighting off the tractor. This is in uh, sanding primer, ready for a coat of green. A bunch of stuff here and zinc chromate primer to keep it from rusting and some newly painted parts there's a generator bracket and fuel tank bracket uh, all the welding on this has been all painted now it's all finished and here's the governor all cleaned up masked off and painted we're putting that back together pretty quick and uh, we'll go down cellar and take a look at some other parts yeah, this is the fuel tank bracket. I just found these. I was looking for them. They were in a tray. I hadn't figured out where they'd gotten to. But there are a set of clamps that go up underneath here to uh, attach the fuel tank to this front bracket that sits in on top of the water pipe. So I've got to sandblast those, get them cleaned up. Over here we got the, uh, the throttle quadrant with the, uh, the levers for the throttle and shutter controls. 
I've run some of the wires through for the lighting and it's all painted ready to go back in there we go got the fan shroud and sanding primer that's ready to be painted and uh, the instrument panel these are the lighting brackets and these are the uh, the new headlights that are correct for the tractor. The ones that are in rubber turned out they were 12 volt headlights. I'm not sure whoever was using them was ever seeing very much. You need 6 volt lights on a 6 volt battery. So we got two headlights and a tail light in these boxes waiting to go in. And over here we just finished up the, uh, the shifter quadrant. Uh, all cleaned up inside and out, ready to go back on the tractor. I've ordered some gaskets, we're waiting on those to come in. Pretty soon I'm going to have to start painting the chassis so we can bolt some of these things back in place. Well, it's June 20th. We've had the tractor just about a year now. And, uh, worked on it a little bit today. My yeah, back has been bothering me, so I haven't been doing as much as I'd like to. We'll get a picture here of where she stands. Got the new neck. I haven't put it on yet, but it's uh, ready to go on. But we've got her all stripped down here. Spent today uh, masking off some of the openings into the uh, crankcase and gearbox. Where the manifold goes and then back here we've got a, uh, a cooling pipe goes in upper cooling pipe and in this section here we've got the uh, governor goes in and there's a cover plate that goes on here and the gear shifter and all that's all been cleaned down the gasket surfaces have been cleaned and all this is actually now ready to take a, a primer, coat of primer. So, uh, starting to clean the chassis up to uh, be able to paint it. Seats off. I ordered a new battery box today. So that should be coming. You got the, uh, the brakes off of it. Only thing left to come off at this point is the starter motor. So she's, uh, if I get back far enough here, she's looking a little strange at this point. Not much like the tractor that pulled in. Almost everything that's been taken off except for uh, maybe the brakes and the clutch linkage has uh, been primed and almost ready to go back on the tractor. So as soon as we get the chassis done, we should be able to walk into the garage here. Here's little John Deere. My bad back, this was the first time today that Jane actually took it out and mowed some of the lawn. Put a light on here. We're looking at the uh, clutch fork. The upper bushing in it here is bad. I've got a bushing on order so we'll put that in. So we get rid of some of the slop. These are the brakes. Just took those out this weekend. <clears throat> so we'll be sandblasting all that. Putting I got a new set of shoes coming. Put new brake shoes into it. We go around this way. A lot of these parts have already been filmed. <clears throat> but they're all sitting there. Waiting their turn to go back on the tractor. The old lights. And uh, we'll go down cellar. Take a look at some of what's going on down there. And headed into the basement here. All these parts have been filmed before, but they're all sitting here waiting to go back onto the tractor. Quite 
sure what to do with this seat yet. I think maybe a new one will solve the problem. Get a light on here. Here's the flywheel cover in uh, sanding primer. And this is the uh, clutch linkage. I've got a new bushing coming for in here. This, this is the bushing I took out of it, and it's got a lot of play in it. These are the original Clepis pins. I don't know if you can see how worn that one is, but it's got grooves in it. This had probably about a 32nd of an inch play. This probably had a 16th. Down this end, we had another 16th of an inch of play. And up at the tip of the handle there, we probably added a foot of travel to the, uh, to the handle between all the places that uh, had play in them. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, take all the play out of the linkage so that the uh, clutch handle has a lot less travel to it. And that's about where we are. It's uh, Saturday, August 15th, and uh, I've had to open up the front of the tent here over the summer to let the moisture out because it tends to collect inside, but we're starting to get to the point where we're cleaning down some of the front uh, steering numbers here to get some of the rust off, sand it down, get it ready to put some uh, phosphoric acid on it to get rust to quit and then put primer over that. So it's starting to clean up the chassis uh, so that we can start to paint the chassis. Once, once the chassis is painted, i got a lot of parts that can start to bolt back onto it at this point. And we'll go inside the garage here and take a look at uh, some of the sandblasting we did this morning. Get out of the sun. Here on the bench I've got a, a whole bunch of parts that were freshly sandblasted. This afternoon I plan to get some zinc chromate primer on them all. Here we have one brake assembly, all the clutch linkage assembly. All those parts are, are ready for primer. And uh, I kept one brake assembly all together over here so that I'll be able to figure out how to put the other one back together. Wednesday, August 26, and we made a little progress here. Here I have one brake assembly all completed, ready to go back onto the tractor. The shaft and some of the parts for the second one. It's all been painted now. It's waiting for assembly. Just finished riveting the, uh, the new linings onto the shoes. Getting ready to take the masking off of this and pull the plug out here for the uh, uh, oiler. Put the new oiler in place. It looks like this. This one's got all adjusted, uh, ready to go back on. Well, we're getting ready to put the second brake together. I've got the uh, the cone in here that uh, adjusts the uh, shoes. The two dogs are in we're using here a uh, brake lubricant. This is the cam that uh, mechanically spreads the shoes when you step on the pedal. So that's all looped up, ready to go in. So the next thing we got to do is uh, assemble the shoes, and put the springs in, and install it. All right, we got the shoes in place, and these uh, D-shaped washers I had to trim just a little bit so that we get the spacing right along here, so that it bounces back up again to where it should be. And that's governed by that writing on the outside of the uh, of the cam and the adjusters all in place over here. So uh, brand new springs, new shoes, ready to put it all back together. It's uh, Saturday, September 12, 2009, and. Uh, 
just had a birthday last month, and my wife uh, Jane bought a uh, new seat back and cushion. And uh, already had the new battery box. So uh, the frame of the seat was good, and it all cleaned up nice and it's all painted. I just put the, uh, the John Deere decals on the, on the seat back. And uh, we found the fellow that makes a replica of the original one. It turns out that the one that was on the tractor uh, was a replacement, one that John Deere made kind of universal, so it had these extra bosses here and there that got in the way of the decals. And it's formed over different on the edge here. If we look at this one, it's actually flattened out more. And this one's formed kind of towards the back and cupped. And we don't have uh, the extra fasteners here. So uh, much more original looking than, uh, than the seat back that was on it. And now we have a matching black seat. Uh, the cushion on the uh, tractor when I got it was yellow and the seat back was black so they didn't quite match. Uh, we got a new work light for it all set up. The decals on the seat here for the power troll and, uh, and caution. So uh, it's looking pretty good. The, uh, the seat itself is, uh, this fella sells different versions of it. One is just a foam cushion. And then this this is a premium seat that actually has springs in it, and it's uh, got a rugged. Oops, I don't want that to tip over. It's got a rugged st steel frame uh, with springs in it, so it should hold up a little better over time and be maybe a little more comfortable to sit on. Okay. October 26, 2009, still working on the tractor project. Right now I'm working on the front wheel rims. This one I just finished sanding. And uh, the area where the uh, tube valve stem comes through was worn paper thin or corroded paper thin. So I ended up welding some reinforcing metal in and I filed that all back and then reamed it out to the proper size hole again. And uh, all this pitting that's in here, rather than leave that rough for the tube to, uh, to hit, uh, I'm going to fill that in with short strand fiberglass which is waterproof so we shouldn't get corrosion again on the inside. The rim over here has already had the uh, the filler put in on the area of the rim here where it uh, would be poking into it. I didn't get too fussy with it down in the center. And it's had an application of this material which is called uh, POR 15, paint over rust 15. And uh, it supposedly encapsulates any rust that's left even though uh, it's been sandblasted to the bare metal and whatnot rather than take a chance with it getting rusty between the tube and the and the uh, steel I did that and then in order to get any paint to stick to that they have a thing called tie coat primer and this primer sticks to the uh, POR 15 better than any other paint and gives a surface that any other paint will stick to so this has had two coats one POR 15 and one of the primer and uh, so it's ready now for uh, a, a final priming for the entire wheel and then the John Deere yellow uh, first John Deere yellow that we'll be painting on the tractor will be on these two rims. It's uh, January 18, 2010, and I finally got some yellow painted here. These are the uh, front wheel bearing hubs. Made a new set of gaskets for them. Pressed in some new bearing cones. Front and back. The old ones are in the box over here. So, as soon as we get the, uh, the front end of the tractor painted, we'll be able to put the wheels back on, get new grease fittings. And over here, we have the wheels, both front wheels. All nicely painted, 
Got a brand new set of tires and tubes out in the garage waiting to go on them. Hopefully we'll get that done this weekend. It's uh, February 11th, 2010. And this weekend I took the starter motor off the tractor. Pulled it all apart, rebuilt it. And uh, gave it a nice coat of Imran, black Imran, so it all looks like new. And it's ready to go back onto the tractor. Nice simple system where mechanically when we press down it pushes the uh, pushes the gear out. When we pull up on it it retracts. When it uh, travels far enough here it pushes on the starter uh, contact, turns the engine over. So uh, first thing we do when we push down on the starter is engage the gear and then secondly uh, fire off the uh, electrical. This is a, uh, a plate that goes underneath the uh, starter. The starter lives in the cavity underneath the engine block cast in. Nice place for it. This plate uh, is kind of porous. So I went looking for a piece of metal at work to, to make a new one out of. And lo and behold, I found this nice piece of stainless steel. So now I probably can't bring myself to paint it. So it's under the tractor where it doesn't show and not many people will know that it's not painted green like it should be, but uh, what the heck. I have this nicely polished piece of stainless steel under there that doesn't need uh, paint and it won't rust. It's April 13th, 2010. Been on this project just coming up two years now. And we're painting the first green on the tractor chassis. <clears throat> Walking into the sun here, kind of get a, a little bit of a blinding. But the uh, the front end and the uh, the radiator all been painted with the John Deere green, and then back here we get the uh, flywheel side of the engine block and. Uh, down underneath, it's all been uh, painted with John Deere green, so we got to start on it. Get some more of this, it's all primed out, uh, painted green. We can start bolting some parts back onto it. The only part of the uh, chassis at this point, other than the wheels, is everything rear, back of the rear axle. Still needs to be cleaned and sanded and wire brushed and primed in order to paint it green. We got the guard for the power takeoff has to come off and get painted. A few things like that, but uh, it's moving along. It's uh, May 11th, 2010, and the uh, chassis is now painted all the way back to the rear axle. Still have some work to do behind that, but. Uh, Holding some things back on, we get the front uh, steering and wheels are all assembled. Uh, yellow came out nice on the wheels. We've got the uh, the radiator uh, shutters are all installed and operating nicely now. On this side, we got the generator in place, the fan assembly, all the way back here. We get the governor mounted with the fan shaft on it. Both the upper and lower uh, cooling pipes are installed. Complete new uh, muffler and exhaust system. All powder coated in high temperature black. New manifold that was broken. This upper pipe had a crack in it. That's new and replaced. Manifold had a broken flange on it. That's been replaced. <clears throat> all new hoses and clamps. Of the Correct type clamp. The new air breather is all in place. Walk around the other side here and uh, see if we can't get a picture of the the air filter assembly. I just put oil in that and put the uh, bottom cap on it tonight. And uh, here's the rebuilt carburetor. All new brass plugs and fittings installed in place. The uh, new throttle 
shaft and the choke. And like I say, the green is painted all the way back, including the axle. And then everything behind the axle at this point still needs uh, wire brushing and degreasing. So we're not far at this point from uh, a little bit of work and we'll be able to put the hood back on and then work our way back through the instrument panel and the, uh, the shift lever and steering tower. That's where we are today. Sunday, September 19, 2010 and uh, Got the tractor out here running. I just pulled a couple of small trees out with it, actually. Uh, running real good. Just back a ways here. You can see I got the rear wheels primed. The paint on everything is all up to where it wants to be. Magneto was the bulk of the problem. First it was out of time and then it didn't have a hot enough spark. Got to shut the gas off, and uh, we'll put her away for the day. It's uh, March 2nd, 2011, and uh, I borrowed my son Jonathan's truck to uh, take the uh, tractor rims over to the tire dealer and get a set of tires put on the new rims. Kind of sad and buried in the snow over here is our tractor. All the painting is done except for the rear wheels. And uh, I got one rim and wheel uh, tire off of it to lean against the tree over here. And uh, the tires actually aren't in bad shape on it, but they don't match each other. The rims are uh, kind of tough shape. They're a little porous in places and bent and whatnot. So we got a new set of rims. I got primer on this center weight, cast center weight. As soon as we can bury, unbury it out of the snow here, uh, finish painting that up and mount a new tire and rim. Tires and rims are in here, in my spray booth, and uh, they look pretty nice. A brand new set of matching Firestone uh, field and road tires. Nice deep tread on them. So we'll put those on as soon as we get the centers painted on them. Saturday, March 26, 2011. Coming up on three years since I've bought the tractor. Today we got one right hand rear wheel all complete with new tires and rims. Still have the other side to do. My buddy Bruce, we're, uh, we're going to be uh, pulling out uh, some trees over here so that uh, you can build a barn. So this would be a good day to play with the tractor. You get this chain out of your way. Stay away. That's good. 
good. Yeah, let me put this down. Oh, don't take it in. Back it up. Back it up. Hold on. We'll adjust the chain here and try it again. Slack up the chain. Good. Looking good. It's uh, Wednesday, July 27th, 2011, and the tractor restoration is completed. Everything's painted. Everything's running good. This will be interesting to see how easy the restart is. tires, all the wheels are painted, let's take it for a ride.
back a little bit. That pretty much completes the restoration. When I finished the restoration of the tractor, uh, we had to start in on the loader. And the, uh, the loader project, I didn't do much, any filming of the loader project, so uh, really don't have any film footage for it. But uh, we have some footage here of the finished result. Uh, it was a challenge because the, uh, the power troll on the tractor uh, has hydraulic function for lifting implements and supposedly you can plumb the uh, lift into it but the problem with doing that is the uh, pump doesn't run all the time with the engine it only runs when the clutch is engaged so you have to work out your uh, bucket movements to uh, have the clutch engaged in order to move the bucket so to make a, a pick uh, you have to put the tractor in neutral and gauge the clutch move your bucket to where you want it then take the tractor out, uh, disengage the clutch, put the tractor into whatever gear you want, and then re-engage the clutch, and then you can uh, go on from there. But it's kind of an awkward situation. So out on eBay, I was able to find a uh, hydraulic pump that John Deere made that uh, adapts in between the magneto and the governor. It's kind of a sandwich. You take the magneto off the governor install the pump and then the pump drives the uh, magneto on the other end. So it makes a neat package and it requires its own oil reservoir which I, uh, I designed and put on the tractor. And then when you uh, once you get the bucket on there, you run, the next problem you run into is the weight of the bucket on the front end makes it very difficult to steer. So I had to put in a power steering unit uh, which is also hydraulic and uh, runs off the same pump. And I had to cut the uh, steering shaft to insert the power steering unit and design a bracket to mount it to the uh, uh, steering wheel pedestal. Uh, that all went pretty well. And then we found out we had to put in a mixing valve because uh, uh, the pump has enough capacity to operate both the power steering and the bucket. But if you get too much going to the bucket, you lose the power steering. If you get too much to the power steering, you kind of lose the bucket. And the mixing valve allows you to... Uh, control the flow to each uh, component so that you can balance it and the, the bucket works and the power steering all works together. So anyhow, uh, uh, now that we've finished uh, showing you the restoration of the tractor, uh, here's what it all looks like put together. September 28, 2014, and I've uh, just uh, finished up the uh, restoration of this old 1949 John Deere BW tractor, the wide front end, and uh, we've added onto it a 45W loader, which comes up over the top of the wide front. To get it to where you see it now, we've, uh, we've had quite a bit of work to do, and uh, we can hear it purring away here. We start up front with the, uh, with the bucket. The bucket is a small bucket with manure tines, and there was one broken one and two bent ones. I was able to get uh, new ones on eBay. The bucket was also a, uh, uh, a drop bucket, which uh, had a manual release for the bucket, and I've added hydraulic cylinders up front. These two brackets that you see here are my design so that the bucket uh, gets full travel out of the two foot cylinders. The cylinders are uh, out to uh, pins that I welded into the frame into existing holes, so that all worked out good. The bucket is controlled by these two levers. This is the uh, lift and this is the bucket foot. And uh, when I put the bucket on, it didn't want to steer anymore, so I had to add a power steering unit. This is a Charlene unit. And then to get that to work right, we had to put in a uh, French hydraulic uh, flow valve, and this has an adjustable flow on it, so I can adjust how much of what comes out of the hydraulic pump goes to the steering, and how much goes to the uh, controls for the bucket. And uh, you can see here, if we, uh, 
up here. Put a little gas. Go a little faster. Put a good big lift on it. system uses this uh, live hydraulic pump <coughs> that installs in between the uh, governor and the magneto. So now this pump runs all the time off the governor and it also drives the magneto. The pump has just enough capacity to handle both the power steering and the loader. But you have to have a mixing valve that you can adjust to get the mixture right because if you get too much of the power steering, you lose the loader. If you get too much of the loader, you lose the power steering. I had to change out the light bulbs from 6 volt to 12 volt. And that was all the part of the system that really had to change other than the battery and the alternator. Well, it's a pretty nice rig, uh, easy to steer, got the ability to use the loader now, makes it much more useful. And pretty soon we'll be taking it back out to Fitchburg to my son Jonathan's place so he can use it to move. Push